Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat, episode 326, featuring a review of the game Age of Decadence by a Canadian team called Iron Tower Studios. Now this game, if you've heard anything about it, you've probably heard how difficult it is. Those rumors are absolutely true. This is an extremely challenging game, but I think it's a very interesting and very innovative game, and definitely worth a look. We've got a lot to cover, so without further ado, here is the Age of Decadence. Oh, and here we go, folks, with the Age of Decadence, a game that probably should have been called the Rage of Quittance, because it is extremely difficult. <laughs> oh my god. It's a whole new level of difficult for RPGs. I used to say Wizardry 4. You know, yeah, that's a hard game, but is it Wizardry 4 hard? Well, for now on, that is going to be, is it the Age of Decadence impossible? Is that what you're talking about here? Because this is a hell of a hard game. It says right there, welcome adventurer, you're about to die, and we salute you. And let me tell you, friend, that is a big one-finger salute uh, from Iron Tower Studios. They are going to piss you off in ways you didn't even know you could be pissed off. Uh, don't, don't even think about playing this uh, the way you would a traditional RPG. Uh, if you think you're going to... Uh, you know, blow your way through combat, you are so <laughs> severely mistaken. Matter of fact, probably the only way to get through the game uh, without a hernia is to go with one of these uh, lore master options. Now, I'll talk about it in more detail later, but the name of the game will probably be Avoiding Combat. And man, does this game make you feel like a little wimp. See all this stuff going on and there's nothing you can do about it. And if you dare try to do something about it, you will be dead faster than you can hit the escape button. All right, looking at the options here, we got different backgrounds, eight, uh, which will determine where you start, some of your faction reps, as well as give you some idea about how you might want to tweak your stats. Uh, there's lots of uh, possibilities here. You'll probably be making several characters until you find one that you might actually be able to get through the game with. So I wouldn't spend too much time sweating it if this is your first character. Uh, just, you know, play around with this and, and see what you can come up with. Uh, all these stats are, of course, critical. Uh, one thing that worries me about this assassin guy is, uh, even though he's an assassin, will probably be fighting as a specialty. I'm a little concerned his intelligence and charisma are so low. Because uh, there are some battles you just can't win. And it would be nice to have a little bit better odds of talking my way out of that uh, with more charisma. Or maybe being able to outsmart some opponents, but but what the hell? We'll go with this. It's also not spelled out here, but these weapons correspond to the stats. Like daggers and swords go with dexterity and perception, and axes and hammers go with strength. Now, I haven't. I don't really know much about the spears or the bows and crossbows. I uh, haven't really tried those out yet. Uh, but my guess is they probably involve perception as well. Uh, and dodge and block uh, the. Temptation here might be to try to get both of these, but you only want to choose one or the other. I'm really not sure which one's best. I mean, obviously, if you have a shield, you want block if you want to play with the shield style. Uh, I've been trying my luck with dodge past a few characters. Uh, it's really nice when you can uh, evade a blow entirely, but of course, you can't dodge everything. <laughs> oh, no. And then you want to look at all these civil skills, and it feels like almost every one of them is important. Uh, a lot of the uh, things will come up in dialogue options. Maybe you can use Streetwise, for example, to talk your way out of a combat. Uh, sometimes that can be absolutely critical. Impersonate comes up more often than I would think. Uh, have, you know, everyone will come up at some point, so... You don't have enough points to specialize in everything, obviously, so I guess you just have to take your chances with that. Crafting comes in uh, handy as well. You never know when you might want to crochet a doily. Make a scarf or a little plastic canvas work. Alchemy comes into play with healing salves and poisons, explosions. Explosions? <laughs> Explosives. Uh, it's a really great one to have as well. And you can pick up plants all over the place. And there's the setting. So a very interesting setting for this game. If you ever read, say, Edward Gibbon and the Rise and Fall of the Roman Empire, it, it kind of reminds me of that. But there's, instead of uh, history unfolding as normal, uh, there was this sort of magical, supernatural cataclysm uh, with a set of nuclear bombs. You have these demonic entities, these demon uh, monsters that have just basically torn everything into shreds. And civilization has, uh, the survivors, I guess, are kind of 
eking out, squeezing out their sustenance in these far-flung places like the this village of Tehran. Uh, so there's lots of uh, detail here. Uh, I, I, I find it fascinating. I love this world. I hope they'll make some more games uh, so we can explore this further. Uh, of course, uh, as you know, I chose the Assassin class, so I will be part of this guild, the Boatmen of Sticks. Not to be confused with the tour bus drivers of Sticks. Sorry about that. Uh, so, as you'd expect as an assassin, I will be right in the middle of all of this intrigue and faced with <laughs> getting my hands bloody. Yes, yes, yes. A lot of uh, ethical dilemmas here. And there's really no way you can play this game with clean hands. Sooner or later, you'll have to do a dirty deed just to stay alive. Seems to kind of want to torture you sometimes with that. You want to do the right thing, but if you do, you <laughs> are punished for it severely. So... All right, here's Nelios, the guild master of Tehran's assassin. He always smiles. Such a jovial guy, this guild master of the assassins. Now, there's no voice acting, in case you somehow didn't pick that up. However, there's uh, good text to read. It's well edited. It's uh, actually quite well written throughout, so... I want to sit here and read it all to you, since you would probably rather do that yourself. But uh, I always say, you know, if you're going to have a text-heavy game, at least make it good text. And fortunately, they more than delivered in that regard. Very interesting story, setting, characters. It's all good stuff. All right, so you can see already I have to make a choice. So we can be ethical, I guess, and try to figure out, oh, who is this person you want me to kill? Why do I, why am I killing him? What's he done? So on. Uh, pretty much, I'm pretty sure we're going to have to kill him. We'll see what happens. If I get a choice not to, that'd be kind of interesting. Okay, let's see. Get some chance to check out our equipment before we go into the scenario. Got some leather armor looking kind of uh, black adderish there. Now this armor, the DR is damage resistance. Uh, it's only got a damage resistance of two. So if anything, if I'm unable to dodge something, I don't have much between me and their weapon. Uh, now it looks like uh, my dagger ha is being wielded on my shin. Why is my dagger being wield wielded on my shin? Well, friend, I guess that is the first of the game's many, many, many bugs. I was hoping not to have to bring this up so soon in the review, but yes, the game is uh, quite bug infested. Uh, it loves to crash to the desktop whenever you load a game. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to crash that often just as you're playing. Uh, so it's, it's not as bad as it could be, but it is an annoyance. And it has all kinds of other glitches, uh, which, uh, unfortunately, uh, more of those made it into the review as well. So you'll see those here. All right, so we've got helmets, too, uh, that we can choose from. The only problem with the helmets, a lot of these have penalties to THC, which stands for tetrahydrocannabinol, which you probably are on at this moment. If you think that's actually what it stands for. No, it stands for the hit chance. And believe me, you're, you have a hard enough time slapping yourself in this game. You definitely don't want to put on a helmet or a big shield or something that's going to, you know, incur a further penalty to that. So be careful. There's a huge trade-off. All right, let's go on to the inn. Now, it looks like I only have one choice there. Kill the traitor. So uh, you can, I guess you could quit the game if you didn't want to do that. But we are going to continue. Let's see. Fear takes over and he continues to stare at the crossbow like a rabbit mesmerized by a snake. The bodyguard finally wakes up and starts reaching for his sword. You know, this, this guy probably should have hired a, a better bodyguard. All right, let's see. He's not welcome in this town. Yeah, okay. So that was easy. So now the bodyguard is, uh, looks like he's going to attack or I could try to persuade him. Or use my dexterity or critical strike. Uh, let's try that option. Success! The guard moves to the side and the bolt head tears a wound in his neck, missing the vitals. Oh, and here we go with the turn-based combat. Thank God it's turn-based combat. I wouldn't even want to think about the hell of this game as a real-time with pause game. My God, you really want to have all the time in the world to really think about each maneuver. Okay, uh, for some reason, my weapons are not equipped anymore. Not sure what happened there. Let's go ahead and equip these. I probably will lose some of my action points by doing so, but I kind of want to have a weapon. All right, let's get that equipped. Oh, crap. 
All right, that was a screw up. I was uh, trying to select a different attack mode and accidentally moved. So I totally wasted that round. Hopefully I'll get a chance to <laughs> attack him. Okay, there we go. Looks like he had some kind of difficulty getting around that corpse. Now with this uh, knife, I can't attack at, a, at an angle. I have to be uh, across from him, so that could be an issue. Now with the arterial strike, if I could land a blow on him, I would wound him and he would take some damage over time. But uh, I've only got a 41% chance of hitting him. And I don't think that uh, dot kicks in automatically. Now I guess there's a, another roll I have to make on that, so... I probably want to switch to a fast attack. It doesn't do as much damage, but it's you can uh, swing more often, and it's got a little bit more accuracy to it for some reason, so... Now see, he's got that damage over time effect on me now. Hopefully, it would kind of suck if this I died in the very first encounter, but believe me, it has, has happened. Now normally a game like this, I would say, well, it doesn't hold your hand. Uh, but actually, Age of Decadence is a hand-holding game. It will hold your hand. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> it, was, it will make you slap yourself until you are dead with it. It is really that difficult. Okay, miraculously, whew, I'm, like, I'm like already break, breaking into a sweat just with the very first encounter. Uh, real close, but we won. And to the victor go the spoils. All right, whew. Get the hell out of here. Perception success. Okay, so our high perception has allowed us to see something. He's clutching some parchment in his hand. It looks like an old map. Now, one of the cool things about this game, uh, one of the many cool things about it, I've tried several different starting characters, and they all have, uh, they all involve this map and the merchant and everything, but you get to see it from different perspectives, right? So if you play as the mercenary, uh, you might be that bodyguard uh, that the assassin can kill. Uh, so it's all kind of nicely interwoven there. It's uh, really fun to try it from different characters uh, starting to see the different perspectives of the starting uh, zones. All right, so look back to Nelios here. He's still smiling. <laughs> Thank God for that. Guess he's happy with my performance. I'd hate to have to fight him now. Wouldn't surprise me though. All right, so learning a bit more about what happened when the Empire fell and where I fit into this world as an assassin. When we take a life, it's understood that it was coming one way or another. We do it nice and clean. Well, the winged skull isn't very businesslike. The emblem of the boatman. All right, now it's time to go see Fang, the lore master. And look at that, got an achievement to boot. Okay, don't want to get cocky though. Let's go talk to Colton. Let's see, what does he have? It's always worth talking to everybody in the game. You exhaust all the dialogue options. Uh, just make sure you're not saying you're going to kill them or something. Uh, but often, often you will get some free stuff. You get a lot of free training points this way, and believe me, you need every point. Let's see. Okay, so he's going to tell us about the Ordu. The Ordu or everything this town is not. It's like nothing really helpful there. Let's talk to Diaz. He wants us to hone our skills. It's you against your targets. And my hardest fight was was against a 14-year-old kid. I offed his paw quietly, but his bodyguard surprised me. <laughs> uh, then the kid walks in. Oh, great. Doesn't that warm the soul? Doesn't seem to matter which of these factions you try to side with, they all seem to be bastards. Okay, here's my alchemy. I like the alchemy system as well. You know, you get all these different herbs and you can mix them up in different combinations. Of course, I don't have nearly enough skill yet to make anything really potent. But already, even uh, with just a couple of points, you can make some useful things. That healing salve is going to be very handy because it looks like I did not automatically heal up. Let's talk to Fulvio here. <laughs> Still alive, <laughs> Gaius. <laughs> yes, <laughs> miraculously. See, there we go. Just by talking to him, I got uh, 15 points into my uh, weapons there, including some in my ranged attacks, bows, crossbows, and throwing. Unfortunately, at a low level, level 1, I don't think I'm going to be doing much damage with those. 
you know, the higher up you, every one of these uh, combat skills will have sort of an auxiliary thing that goes with it. For example, the axe has some, some bonus damage you can do. The sword has a damage over time uh, ability. Uh, dodge is really cool. You can actually counterattack. And that's actually made the difference in quite a number of battles with my other characters. Just that free counterattack. I'm still low on health. Now, there's no way to rest in this game. At least not uh, by choice or not manually. Sometimes you can rest as part of the dialogue options, but you can't just go to the inn and sleep. Now, so you can either pay this healer or you can use up all your herbs. Alright, so here we are at Fangs. And another thing I like is you can just instantly go to wherever you want to on the map. Not like those uh, stupid games where you have to just sit, sit there staring at your character, slowly traverse a huge screen. Uh, none of that here. Just click on where you want to go and boom. Alright, here's uh, Mr. Fang. Cool looking dude. He is the local lore master. And he's uh, quite the shyster. Always trying to sell these uh, bogus artifacts to people. Actually, some pretty funny dialogue. If you play as the lore master, uh, then you get to be his apprentice. And see what it's like from, from his point of view. It's, it's really fun stuff. Alright, so I got a civil skill point by just by employing my streetwise. Alright, here's the money. Don't treat me like a farmer. Uh, this map bears the seal of Thor Agoth the Artificer. So another cool part of this uh, universe is you're always finding these... Uh, all this references to the ancient... Uh, the ancient or the older civilization had all this wondrous technology, all this machinery. Uh, quite a bit has been lost. So they're doing some really interesting stuff from kind of an alternate history uh, point of view. Just so happens I love uh, the history of Rome. You know, I've read Edward Gibbons' book. I like uh, Dan Carlin's uh, hardcore history series about Rome. <laughs> I listen to the uh, History of Rome podcast. I, mean, I, just, I just love this era. And it's really cool to have a game uh, set in this. And, not just by following the standard history, but to you know, work in some sort of supernatural stuff in there. It's a, a really, really uh, creative stuff. Alright, so I was able to climb up here with dexterity, but I'll need sneak, otherwise old Fang will just uh, catch me snooping. Uh, unfortunately, I also need lock picking, which I don't have, so that, that's going to be a problem with this guy. You know, the intelligence is low, so I'm not going to have enough skill points to, you know, get like sneak and lock picking, you know, and uh, persuasion. So you're going to be, have to get familiar with a little, uh, little something called failure. Oh, yes. Uh, failure, failure, man. I got so sick of seeing that damn uh, red text. You know, and sometimes it'll let you get to, uh, you know, through two or three branches of it and then you'll fail. And you'll be right back out on the street. It looks like I can sell some stuff though. Sell that turban. <laughs> Don't really think it's going to help matters uh, wandering around the streets in a bright red turban. Uh, let's see, some daggers. Uh, the different kinds of daggers and swords will have slightly different abilities as well. Uh, for example, the. Uh, uh oh. I think that shorter dagger there has a. Uh, you know, cost fewer action points. I think the longer one might do damage, so... There's just little minutia like that. You kind of want to just break out the old Excel spreadsheet and go to town with this. Alright, there's another alchemist. Maybe he will train me in alchemy. Yeah, never seen a real alchemist before. Let's see, I can show you the basics. I'm actually not sure if these herbs will regrow over time or if there's a finite supply. Uh, judging from the rest of the game though, I'm pretty sure it's a finite supply. So you probably want to be sparing with your herbs, but you can make some pretty cool stuff. Now one thing it won't let you do is heal yourself up during combat because, <laughs> you know, man, wouldn't that be nice? Uh, but I guess it's kind of realistic. Hey man, can you stop killing me for a second so I can rub, some, rub on some Neosporin on my ass? <laughs> Come on! Alright, here we go. So I can make that healing salve. Now I can make the strong version, but I'd have to have a higher... No, I can actually make that now. Okay, well, that's pretty sweet. So I can make the strong healing salve, as long as I can find these herbs. Uh, now I can, however, make the strong poison. Oh, that would be pretty awesome. Gotta, gotta have nine points to make that? Uh, that's, that's quite the investment 
cool thing about poison, though, it gets around all their armor and stuff if you can just uh, hit them with it once. And that can, many times uh, during the game, that's made all the difference. It's like I got a Berserk Potion. All kinds of uh, interesting things you can make. There's a Nero Stimulant. A potent elixir that will speed up your reflexes and reaction. Well, sort of like uh, coffee, I guess. And I can make a strong version of that for four points. So, you know, it looks like uh, having four points in alchemy would lead to quite a few perks. So anyway, what was I doing? Oh, yes, I'm supposed to kill this guy. Cassius. He is the uh, lore master that the uh, Antetus sent for and wants to replace Fang. So you have to decide uh, if you like Cassius better than Fang, or maybe this guy can make a better deal for you. Master Cassius. Is there something you want? Okay, so we can lure him to an abandoned house. We can escort him to Lord Antetus. Or I guess we can just say goodbye. So what should we do? Why don't we lure him to an abandoned house? <laughs> hey, what is this hovel? Explain yourself immediately! Let's see. Master Fang thinks you've made a mistake. He wants he asked me to correct it. We could use our streetwise. We could try to intimidate him. Let's do the first one. Fang. Fang is a charlatan. He can entertain children with his tales, whereas I can offer you something that's worth a lot more. Okay, I'm buying. I'll listen. I can open the secrets of metal transmutation to you. Now, isn't that more of a alchemy than a lore keeper thing? Anyway, sounds good. All weapon metals are what's called uh, alliers. <laughs> alliers. <laughs> Man, I wish I knew how to pronounce that one. Uh, several substances forged together in such a manner they become a new substance. So, blue steel. Okay, well, this all sounds useful. Okay, so. Sounds like he's got some very valuable information. Would kind of be a shame to kill him, I think. So let's see. We have a deal. Critical strike him <laughs> or attack him. Let's uh, take the deal. So I guess with this, I've betrayed Fang. I don't know if this counts as betraying the Assassin's Guild. Hopefully not. Oh, I lost some word of honor. So one of my traits... That'll make it harder to negotiate with people, I guess, now that I'm known to be a liar. Let's see, here's Delar. Now, he's not going to let me in to see Antidos until I do some really difficult quests for him. Uh, I can go to an outpost, and he's got a bandit camp. Bandit camp that he's dealing with. Doesn't really want to give me any help. I'm not sure if you can get your... Maybe if you get your uh, intelligence and your charisma up high enough, your civil skills, maybe you can get a little bit better uh, a deal here than just going in by yourself, but uh, I haven't been able to figure that out yet. Okay, yeah, he's willing to sacrifice our lives. Nice guy, Delar. All right, let's see. What do we have over here? Thessalos. So, some of the characters, you won't be able to interact with them, you know, unless you're the right uh, class. Like, as a lore master, you can talk to that guy. He'll take you inside to appraise some of his stuff, but uh, as the assassin, I'm SOL. So, anyway, if you see some characters that don't seem to do anything, just keep that in mind. Maybe on your next playthrough, you could try them again. I think there's something over here, too. Let's see, let's see, what is this? I forgot what. A well-dressed woman opens the door. You can't help but notice her rings and necklace. Use my streetwise. Okay, successful. Now, impersonate. I don't have impersonate skill. I don't know if that's either or. Do I need both of those, streetwise and impersonate? Right, let's just try it. Failure! <laughs> oh, failure. <laughs> okay. Well, let's see. Got another option. Wait till dark. Gets darker, a small detachment of guards arrives and sets up a camp. Some are in the front, some are in the back. Okay. Sneak. Success. That's about damn time. Finally starting to get some success. Maybe we'll actually get some treasure. Success again. All right, this is looking pretty good. All right, what do we have here? Look for value. 
Ah, of course. Failure! What a tease, what a tease. I don't even know what I would need at this point. Sneak is up pretty high. So you can see what I was telling you about those points. You know, to, to do anything, you have to have very high scores. And there's no way you can possibly get to that level in more than a few. So you really have to think about what you want to specialize in. Ah, and here we have a preacher. I guess he's sort of uh, like those campus preachers that come to my college from time to time. What more do you need to realize you're on the wrong path? Oh, quite the sermon there. In our pride, we forgot our pact with heaven. But we are not the God's equals. Looks like he's stirring up some dissent. Probably not going to be a good thing for us. Let's see. You want us to turn on Antidas? The heckler interrupts him. Are you mad, old man? If the guards hear you, you'll be strung up. Yeah, I better <laughs> pick up a stone and throw it. Ah, but we missed. Now, I wonder if that, if my throwing skill was higher, if I would have actually hit him with a rock. Uh, these are the questions to ponder. I guess he needs more preachers to practice on. All right, back to the boatman. The boatman of sticks. Let's see if Nelios is happy with me. He's still smiling. Looks like we're ready, getting ready for another mission. All right. Dias, a rising star in the guild, greets you with a nod. Someone needs to die. He gets the job. So I guess that's my competition. Look alive, boys. There are people in this fine town who need killing. Aurelian envoy is expected to arrive today and deliver an ultimatum. All right, so I guess we're going to be assassinating. Guys, uh, there's a small house near the gate on the left side. Been informed the occupant of the house has a guest who arrived this morning to collect the reports. Kill them both. Any questions? <laughs> Are you sure they're spies? No, I'm not. <laughs> okay, uh, 40 Imperials per body. All right, so let's get her done. A sickly old man lies on the bed, being tended by a young woman. My father, he must be dying. Uh, kill him or approach them? I think I'm going to play it safe. Kill them. The man springs from the bed in a lightning quick motion, dagger in hand. His daughter produces a small crossbow. Okay, looks like I made the right decision. What the? What? The? I'm being a attacked by wigs. The wig party. Yes, it looks like we've encountered one of those famous bugs. Alright, I think I should be able just to load in the last autosave, hopefully. No, actually the game has crashed at the desktop there. Went ahead and reloaded it. Let's get back in there. Maybe it will uh, <laughs> actually work this time. It would have been kind of fun to fight those wigs in the dark. Alright, so... Wait for it to load, and here we go. All right, this time it looks like it's working. All right, interesting little space here to fight in. And again, for some reason, my weapons are gone. Okay. Really need to try to figure out what's up with that, because that is costing me some precious action points every time I have to go in there and re-equip those. All right, let's see what I can do. So you can attack in a diagonal with a dagger. You can with some weapons. So, I don't know. She's got a crossbow. Yeah, I'll just go ahead and... I don't know. Alright, at least I was able to dodge that crossbow attack. Dodge this dagger. So it looks like my dodge is working out pretty well. Now I need to pick an attack. Now these all have trade-offs. Arterial Strike has the potential to put a uh, bleed over time if I could crit with it. That would be really cool, four damage over two turns, but unfortunately it's only a 33% chance just to hit him. And then whatever the odds are of that, of that critical hit, probably even lower, throw opponent. Throw him to the ground. So the dagger, as you can see, gives you plenty of options to choose from. You could try to hit his legs. I think that would make him less uh, dodgy. <laughs> hit him in the arms. Uh, all kinds of things, but unfortunately everything has such a low hit chance. Uh, 
58% with the regular blow. That doesn't seem too bad. Let's see, bypass damage resistance, 43%. And let's try the power attack. And I missed him twice. Got one action point left. I guess there's nothing I can do with that. Okay, yep. He got me pretty good that time. Let's try the fast. Arms. I don't know. <laughs> I kind of wanted to just break out an Excel spreadsheet and go to town on this game. Uh, so many factors to consider. Let's just try the fast attack. 73% chance. At least I can hit him with this. So, he doesn't have any armor on, thankfully, so I'm doing uh, full damage. Eight points of damage. I'll go ahead and poison my dagger, too. A little dot on him. Oh. oh, she got me with a crossbow bolt. Ten points of damage. Ooh. This will be close. He's badly wounded. Now, if I could just get away from him, I could just let that poison do its work, but unfortunately, they get a free swipe at you when you move. And my dodge, I don't trust my dodge to get me out of that. All right, he's out. Now, the woman has apparently exhausted her bolts, so she's after me with her, her dagger. Oof. I got these uh, combat animations sped up, by the way. You can speed them up 200%. I wish to God it had a, a faster option. I, I would like to go 400%, but 200% is good. That's a lot better than nothing. Let's speed up the combat. Okay. Okay, well, I didn't do too bad that time. A uh, young spy. Looks like a beggar. I work for House Aurelian. Help me, and the most powerful house will be in your debt. Kill me, and you'll get a few hundred coins at most. So, <laughs> here's one of those momentous decisions. Do I stay true to my Assassin's Guild, or do I uh, betray them and go with this kid instead? Look out for number one. What would an assassin do? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Why don't we just try this option? Let's see where this takes us. Let's uh, go with the kid. This kind of reminds me of a, a good tabletop role-playing game when you're in the hands of a capable dungeon master. Lots of interesting choices to make. And you never really know where it's going to go. So, again, kudos to the writers. Uh-oh, looks like Mr. Diaz is not happy about our decision. So, question is, how tough is he? Miss, he dodged. And he got his little retaliation strike. So, cool thing about dodge is uh, you have a chance to counterattack. So if your dodge is high enough, you'll be doing that quite often, and that can make a huge difference, that free swing. All right, I got the poison on him. Now, if I could just back away from him, maybe I could just let that poison do its trick. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like retreat is an option. He is determined to bring me down. He's slightly wounded. His armor is absorbing almost everything. Okay, that was... Maybe I can get him to go for him instead. All right, that guy looks like he's got a little bit better armor, but I probably don't want him to die since I need him to vouch for me <laughs> when I get to this next town. Uh, let's go back to our options here. It'd be cool if I could hit him in the legs and I could keep him from dodging so much, but of course he dodged that attack and that attack, and now he's crippled me, and now I am dead. <laughs> Oh, uh, you try to get up, but you can't. Puddle of blood around you is getting bigger. Oh, woe is me. All right, let's uh, try it again. No shame in losing. All right. Let's see what else I can do. Maybe I could try to entangle him. Maybe, uh... <laughs> Maybe I could just stay well out of way and let this other guy engage him. Oh, he's got a crossbow. Okay, interesting. So my friend there, looks like he's got him uh, occupied. Oh, he's doing lots of damage. Actually, it looks like he's just doing a couple of points, maybe four or five points uh, per turn there. The guy has some armor that's absorbing some of that, so let's see. Now, 
kind of like a good Las Vegas scenario, right? Do you want to go for the high risk, high reward swing or the safe, but you're only going to ding him for a couple of points maneuver? Again, I, I keep thinking if I could just poison him. There we go. Maybe that'll help. So I got my entangle on him now. Maybe I can. Uh... Nope. He's <laughs> even with a net around him, he's still dodging everything. Go back to herding sheep. This cannot land a blow in this guy. He doesn't seem to have that problem though. So I did uh, reduce his ability to dodge a little bit. I nicked his leg there. But man, he is just eviscerating me with that, with his attack. Should I try the arterial strike? It takes a no oh, <laughs> six percent chance. <laughs> Yeah, I just, uh, this is not going to go well. I can see that. Uh, I need to think again about some different strategies. Uh, okay, we'll try it one more time here. Uh, this is uh, this is the game here, folks. I mean, you will be reloading these battles again and again. You might fight the same battle ten times. Uh, I do have a crossbow here. I wonder if I could... Uh, Let's see what else I have. Uh, what is that? Liquid fire vial. Yeah, maybe this is what I need to do. Set him on fire. All right. So that did 12 points of damage to him. All right. Of course, he got out of the area right away. But maybe he's weakened now, at least. All right. Let's try this. Maybe if I would have entangled him and then hit the fire, maybe I could have uh, trapped him in the, in the in that fire area. Oh no! <laughs> I think I just burned his ass. Now he's out for revenge. Let's see. Okay, got the trap on him. Man, he is a. I don't know what his dodge score is, but it must be way higher than any character I've ever had. Man, look at the damage that son of a gun does. Even two on one, this guy is just real bad news. Can't even land a bluff. I could just get him poisoned, maybe, and, and I could just back away and let him die slowly. He's badly wounded. Ah, oh, crap. Uh, okay, I think I got the right strategy, so bear with me. I'm going to try it uh, one more time here. Let's see. This guy's definitely a bastard. Okay, let's see. Hmm. Kind of like a game of chess, really. <laughs> if all the pieces were razor sharp, you cut your fingers every time you moved one. All right, I'll just let him come to me this time. Nope. Hopefully. Yep, entangle him. Okay, let's try that. Now it's... Oh! Did not mean to do that. Okay, he's he's bleeding. Hopefully that net is doing something to, to discourage him. Okay, just can't... I was hoping to poison him, but uh, it's like that's no good. Let's back off. Alright, perfect. He's attacking that guy now. Let me try that fire vial on him. Maybe I can position it so that it won't uh, hit my ally there. Okay, throw that. Right. Uh, let's try that. Wish they'd made that a little easier to see. Okay, I think that's the right spot. Okay, now I moved in range. And now he's poisoned, so this is looking pretty good. Hoping to back away from him. There we go. Okay, so I think I will actually succeed this time. He's badly wounded, he's poisoned, he's bleeding. <laughs> as long as he doesn't turn around and just do 23 points of damage to me, I think we'll be good. Come on, come on, come on. Badly wounded, come on, come on. 
Try the archery. Nope. <laughs> Regular? No. Ah, okay. Miss. Hit. Did zero points of damage. I did a one point of damage! <laughs> Man. Barely a scratch. Man, it's it's hard enough just to hit the bastard, and then when you hit him, you do like one point. Ah, and we got him! <laughs> Man, you know, a game like this, it's hard as hell, but man, when you win, it is a sweet, sweet feeling. Alright, so that's enough of this assassin guy. Let me show you some of my other characters. So this is my main character, my mercenary, and I was having a lot of fun with him, making progress until I managed to get him into a an unwinnable scenario here. I'm sort of stuck. I joined the Imperial Legion and got through the first mission okay. Got to the second mission though and I'm stuck. Won't let me out of the compound. The only thing I can do is fight this battle. And I don't see any, any way around this. Uh, you know, except for creating another character coming back at it. Uh, basically I have to fight this uh, Antetus guy and this Delar guy and a bunch of his uh, guards. If my intelligence was higher then I could get some better help with the battle but <laughs> unfortunately it's too low. So I'm stuck with these uh, red shirts in every sense of the word. Uh, persuasion, all this stuff is too low. So, as you'll see here, it's it's a battle that's just, it's, it's really agonizing because I've, I've managed to get it pretty close a few times to victory. I was actually up all night playing this over and over, trying every different strategy I could think of. Just can't get past it, though. I looked at some uh, online forums for help, and apparently a lot of people get stuck here. Uh, even those that uh, have enough intelligence to get the Elite red shirts still have a hard time, so I don't really feel bad here. Uh, but it does kind of suck because I got no choice really but to, you know, create a new character. Which I guess that's par for the course with Age of Decadence. And I wouldn't say I liked it, I wish I could have gotten past this battle, but but on the other hand, I gotta have respect for a, uh, a developer that doesn't mind presenting this level of challenge. <laughs> Basically, I mean, they made it pretty clear at the beginning what you're getting yourself into. It's a very easy to create uh, sucky characters, and even if you even if you got get a guide and follow it exactly, it's there's definitely no guarantees you're going to uh, make it through this game. At least not without a, a great many reloads and retries and attempts and uh, really thinking about your strategies and your stats and all of that stuff. You might think this would make for a, a poor experience or not be very much fun, but I actually found myself wanting to try it that one more time. You know. I load it up just for one more attempt, see if there's just something overlooked, some way to get past it. Unfortunately, I just uh, <laughs> finally just had to give up. Uh, but, you know, I, I, even for all that, I, I still I like the game. And as I said before, you uh, really what you should probably do if you just want to make it through the game is to play a lore master or somebody with more charisma and higher intelligence, because that way you can get around a lot of these battles. And the ones that you have to fight, you can get a lot better help and be at a much better uh, tactical advantage. So, you know, it is what it is. It's, if if you keep trying to play this like I do, I just can't help myself. I, I really want to get into a combat and <laughs> and prove my metal, uh, only to get totally owned and my, my ass beaten and go uh, crying home to mommy. Uh, you know, if that's you, you probably don't want Age of Decadence. And uh, even if that is you, though, you might want to rethink your decision to buy this game, at least until they work out the, the bugs. Because, like I said, it, it's just kind of insult to injury when you're, you're reloading and about half the time you're crashing to the desktop anyway. Fortunately, most of the crashes come when you're trying to load a game, so it's not that critical. It's more of an annoyance. I mean, it would be unplayable if it was crashing that often during combat or when you're just walking around, so... It's not as bad as it could be, but still definitely something to consider uh, before you purchase the game. All in all, though, I think it's definitely a game worth checking out. It's definitely something different. I admire the designers and developers for taking a big risk uh, with such a challenging game, especially one uh, in an unusual setting. You know, this whole post-apocalyptic Roman thing is very interesting. I like the story. It's it's You definitely have to admire a CRPG developer that comes up with something that uh, really discourages combat to this degree. They really, really want you to try different sides of role-playing and all those dialogue options and whatnot. So if that's your thing, I think you'll find a lot to love here. Uh, just don't expect this uh, to, to play like a, 
uh, Divinity Original Sin or uh, Wasteland 2 or any of those sort of games that have come out recently. Uh, this one's way harder. You're going to be reloading many more times. It's, it's kind of like it's got the hardcore mode and that's it. So, you know, that that is what it is. And they make that very clear, you know, when you start the game. So if that's not your thing, I wouldn't recommend this game at all. Uh, if, on the other hand, you don't mind a challenge, you, you like to play battles through many, many times until you find just that strategy that works, or, you know, just get that, all those uh, dice just lined up just right for you to get to the next part. You know, if that's the kind of thing you, you savor, uh, then you're going to, to love this. And there's quite a few mechanics you can dig into. Uh, you can really put a lot of thought into your tactics and strategies. So, uh, you know, in short, the only thing I really hate about the game, of course, are those, those bugs. But hopefully those will get worked out in a patch pretty soon. Uh, so yeah, that is what it is. Just keep an eye out for your patch notes before you, you buy the game. Uh, but otherwise, I think there's a lot to enjoy here, and I definitely admire the developer uh, for taking these kind of risks and for putting something out that, that's really different uh, than the rest of the stuff that's out there. So kudos to Iron Tower Studios. I'll be keeping an eye on these guys, see what they come up with next, and I hope you enjoyed the video. That's all for this week's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Should be back next week with a new interview series with Rob Irving, uh, currently working on the Star Citizen project, uh, but who has a very long resume of uh, flight simulators and many other types of games. Uh, check out the link in the show notes if you'd like to uh, learn more about him. Actually interviewing him tomorrow, so uh, let me know if you have any questions, and I'll be happy to uh, forward those on to Rob. As always, I want to thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much for your support of the show. It uh, really means a lot to me, guys. Thank you so much for that. Uh, if you would like to do your part to keep these uh, episodes coming, just go to that link in the show notes to that. A little Patreon link only takes a couple of seconds to uh, set that up, and you will be very happy that you did. Get all kinds of uh, cool perks and behind-the-scenes uh, bat chat stuff with that. So uh, thank you to everyone who has keeping the show going. Couldn't do it without you. All right, what about that news from the Matt Cave? Well, let's see, quite a bit of news this week. Uh, first and foremost, the DVD is out, and I have uh, figured out how to get these to you. So I got about. Uh, 19 copies left of this. If you would like a signed copy, uh, just follow the link in the show notes to a an eBay uh, site where uh, it'll tell you how much it's going to cost for shipping and all that stuff. So uh, I'm selling these for 15 bucks, and then whatever the shipping is, uh, should be about two dollars and something if you live in the U.S. Uh, more, I guess, if you're international. Uh, but you know, thank you to everyone who's purchased those. I really want, if you like this show, I really want you to have a copy of that. I think you'll enjoy it, and plus, it's uh, I'm very happy to sign those for you. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, XCOM 2 is uh, just came out. Uh, it looks pretty interesting. The reviews so far have been really outstanding. Uh, people are really excited about it. I haven't played it yet myself. Uh, if you have, though, please uh, chime in on the show notes. Let me know what you think. Really tempted to buy it, but you know, I always like to get a few opinions before I <laughs> uh, spring for $60 worth of game, if you know what I mean. Well, let's see what else here. Uh, there's an official release date for the new Doom reboot. That's a it software published by Bethesda. Uh, May 13th is the date they're talking about. Uh, it looks like a pretty interesting game. I don't know, of course, how it's going to compare to the original series, but this one will have <laughs> no cover and no health regeneration. Uh, push forward combat is what they're calling this. It's kind of interesting to me that they're sort of advertising what it doesn't have. You know, I'd like to hear more about, more about what it has. Uh, but anyway, let me know what your thoughts are on that. All right, I think that will do it for the news. Uh, what about that ale of the week? Well, as you probably heard, the sad news, Edgar Froza of uh, Tangerine Dream uh, just passed away. And Tangerine Dream is one of my favorite bands. I love their stuff. I've listened to all their albums uh, repeatedly, especially Phaedra and Rubicon. So it's very sad to hear this. Uh, but in his honor, I found, or actually my wife found, a, uh, a beverage from uh, Sprecher. Uh, this is a fire-brewed gourmet soda called Orange Dream. 
And I'm pretty sure they got that name. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's based on Tangerine Dream or play on that. Uh, these guys make some gourmet root beers, and I believe they also make regular beer. Yeah, Sprecher Brewing out of Glendale, Wisconsin, Sprecher Brewery. Uh, <laughs> enjoy in moderation they have on the bottle. Yeah, so I'm pretty sure they make alcoholic beer. Uh, just so happens this one's a soda. Let's see. In your wildest dreams, cows roam the orange groves in search of a starry spot for sitting and sipping the succulent citrus soda fire brewed from natural orange flavors, honey, and vanilla for a creamy, dreamy taste explosion that's over the moon. For optimum enjoyment, serve in frosted mugs. Well, I don't have a frosted mug here, but I did put my rather excellent drinking horn in the freezer for a while, so <laughs> hopefully that uh, will suffice. Anyway, let's get this orange dream open and see what it's all about. All right, so I got some of this Sprecher orange dream here in the rather excellent, rather cold drinking horn. It smells really orangey, as you would expect. Smells good. Uh, let's give it a taste, though. <laughs> Actually, quite thirsty, so uh, this will be really nice. Wow, that is a very uh, thick, creamy beverage here. Uh, very sweet, but not, not over the top. You definitely taste some orange flavors. Kind of tastes like one of those uh, uh, orange pops, you know, the frozen kind. Uh, really nice uh, beverage here. Let me try it again. You know, why can't I say this is really good? Tastes like kind of like a, uh, an orange milkshake, maybe. Uh, just really phenomenal. I love the, uh, the, uh, the creaminess of this, the sweetness. You know, it's, it's so hard to find a soda. Uh, the sweet without being overly sweet. You know, a lot of them just dump so much sugar in there. That's about all you can taste. Uh, it looks like Sprecher really nailed this one. You, just, you really get that orange flavor uh, without all of that sugar dumped on top of it. Yeah, just really exquisite. You know, I think this is probably the best orange flavored drink I've ever had. <laughs> you know, you know if it, like Sunkissed or whatever, uh, this is way better than those. Uh, I'm going to go a full five out of five drinking horns on this. Uh, Sprecher Orange Dream. If you like orange flavored sodas and don't want something that's just so ridiculously sweet, uh, definitely check this out. Hey, I like the uh, orange flavor, uh, kind of an orange uh, uh, ice cream pop uh, milkshake kind of flavor going here. Uh, really good stuff. So five out of five horns on that. All right, so let's wrap this up with a quotation. I can feel my, my voice just about to give out, so <laughs> if I get this right the first time. Uh, anyway, thinking about Rome, ancient Rome and all that, I wanted to find a quote from Edward Gibbon, who wrote the uh, rise and fall, or the decline and fall of the Roman civilization. And it goes something like this. We improve ourselves by victories over ourselves. There must be contest, and we must win. See you guys next week. Jesse, look what you made me go and do. Well, you shouldn't be wasting your time playing a child's game anyway. It isn't a child's game. It's a test of skill. Oh, well, if you think it's a dad Mernigi, why don't you try it? Oh, don't be silly. I knew you'd say that. I don't care how smart you are. You are no match for this thing. I'm not, huh? No. no. Lend me a quarter. With pleasure.